This video will focus on the concept of conservation of energy and we'll solve several example problems showing how you can use this idea of energy conservation to find um, things like velocities or how far or how much force was exerted on an object. And the basic idea um, focuses on the idea of transforming energy. So a little different than what we talked about with momentum where we were focused only on transferring momentum from one object to another. Um, in the, this case, we're going to actually be able to transform the energy from one form into another. <clears throat> and so the, the definition of transformation or energy transformation is that energy can be changed from one form to another following this idea of the law of conservation of energy. So for example, from kinetic to potential or potential to kinetic um, and in, into other forms also. So um, potential energy could be transformed into kinetic but also could be turned into heat or to sound or to light. Um, following the law of conservation of energy. And the idea of energy conservation is just simply that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed or it can be transferred in the same way that momentum was transferred <coughs> excuse me, in previous chapters. Um, but those are the only two things that can happen. So either the energy must be transformed from one form into another or it can be transferred. So for example, two objects might collide and kinetic energy from one object would be transferred to the kinetic energy of the other object or um, it could be that the energy is transformed. So when uh, two cars collide, for example, some of the kinetic energy that the cars originally have will go into work, which will be done on the cars. The front of the cars will get crumpled so there'll be a force applied over some displacement, there'll be some heat, there'll be some sound, there could even be some light. Um, so energy conservation is probably the most fundamental law in the universe. It is one that to our understanding is never violated. So energy in our universe is not created and it's not destroyed. We just transform it or we transfer it from one object to another or from one form to another. You could, you could think of it a little more simplistically, energy conservation, if you just want to focus on the mechanical energy, then the idea would be that the total mechanical energy would remain constant as long as there's no friction or drag force or resistive force that is um, present. And so just to show how that would work out, how does the idea of the total mechanical energy being constant, um, we'll do an example problem to just kind of illustrate how that works. So in this example, uh, Manny drops a 0 0.035 kilogram rock uh, from the top of his school, which is 17.5 meters tall. And the question that we want to answer is, how fast will it be moving just before it um, lands? So in order to do that, we're going to use this idea that the total mechanical energy, or that this object will follow conservation of energy. And so we would say that EP plus EK before must be equal to the total potential plus kinetic after. So this should remind you a little bit of the conservation of momentum law. We look at the total amount of mechanical energy before, which is in the form of both kinetic and potential, and we look at the uh, total amount of potential and kinetic after, and according to the law of conservation of energy, those two must be the, the same. So if we fill in what these equations, what these look like, this would be mgh naught, the initial height, plus one half mv squared, mv naught squared. That must be equal to mgh, the final height, plus one half m v squared. <clears throat> okay, so in this in this problem though, um, it said that um, he dropped the rock. So that means that the initial velocity in this case must have been zero. The object had no initial velocity. Uh, it was dropped from a height of 17.5 meters and it has a mass of 0 0.035. Okay, so initially there is no um, velocity, so this would be zero. Okay, and we're talking about the rock landing, and so we want the rock to fall to where it has a height of zero. So that means that after the fall, 
this guy is zero. So there's no potential energy at the end. And as a result, the formula simplifies down a little bit. So it comes down to m g h naught equal to one half m v squared. <clears throat> or we can get rid of the m's. And this says that v squared, I'm going to multiply the 2 over to the other side, 2g h naught, or that v is equal to the square root of 2g h naught. And so we'll just go ahead and plug in the numbers. So all I really needed to know was the initial height of this thing. So 2 times 10 for gravity times 17.5 and now we can go to the calculator so uh, second function square root 2 times 10 times 17.5 <clears throat> and that says that the velocity would be 18.7 meters per second. So the idea in this problem was that we transformed energy. So there's not two objects. There's only one object. But that object had energy transformed from one form, which was potential energy before, to kinetic energy afterwards. And then as a result, I was able to calculate the velocity. You might imagine doing this problem in reverse. Maybe I kick a soccer ball straight up in the air. And so as a result of giving the ball velocity, I'm going to transform kinetic energy into potential energy, and I might have solved for the height. How high did the ball um, go? So this um, conservation of energy simply says that the total of these two, potential and kinetic, must be equal all the time. So at any point, I could look at the total kinetic and potential, and it must be equal to each other. <clears throat> so let's just take a quick look at what it looks like um, graphically. If you were to graph out this um, concept of transforming energy from uh, potential energy to kinetic energy. And we'll look at two different graphs. So we'll look at how the energy changes as a function of the two main properties of mechanical energy, and that is the um, height and the velocity. So let's look at height first. And then we'll look at velocity. So, if you just think of, you know, very simply, um, as an object falls from some height, right? So, for this problem, the object dropped from some height. Um, when it has zero height, MGH says that it has zero potential energy. So if we were to draw that, that would look something like this. Okay. <clears throat> and what happens to the object um, as the height goes closer to zero, you would find that if you started at H naught and we started moving down closer and closer to the ground, what would happen is that the kinetic energy would increase. Okay, that should be a straight line, a little, little bit of curve there. So this line represents EP, the potential energy. The higher you go, the higher you go, the more potential energy you have. But the kinetic energy works in the exact opposite direction. So the kinetic energy was highest when we were closest to the ground. This is EK. But if you look, if I were to add these two together, you would see that at any point I could add these two together to get E total. And the total energy would be just simply EP plus EK. 
So at any point, I could add the two together and I would get the total energy. I can add this point to this point and I would get the total energy. I can add this point on the graph to this point on the graph and I would get the total energy. Here, they both have exactly the same amount of energy. If I add that this point is exactly half the energy right here, <clears throat> half the energy in potential, half the energy in kinetic, and when I add the two together, I get the total amount of, of energy. So the um, energy as a function of height is pretty simple. Energy as a function of velocity is a little bit more um, complex. <clears throat> so for that problem, you notice that the formula for kinetic energy was one-half mv squared. So as the velocity increases, the amount of energy increases dramatically. So this guy actually curves up a little bit, kind of like a parabola. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, and that is EK, and the potential energy looks similar to that, but again, just to remind you, the total amount of energy must always be equal, so I can imagine what the kinetic energy must look, or the potential energy, I'm sorry, must look like, and I'm going to turn the paper for just a moment so I can draw this. And this would be my EP. So for this graph, easier to draw the EK first because that's one half mv squared. It's, it forms a parabola. The faster you go, the more energy you have, but it curves upward as a result of the V being squared. And then the EP, just remind you, every point I should be able to add them together. So if I add the zero to this one, I get the total. If I add this point to this, I get the total amount of energy. If I add this point to this point, I get the same total amount of energy. So E total is constant, and that's just a combination of EP plus EK. So for the problem that we just solved before, we just kind of looked at the end, what happened at the end. All of the potential was transformed into kinetic. Um, but I could have looked at any point. I could have looked, let's say, five meters after it had fallen, how much potential, how much kinetic energy, and I would have found that the two energies would have added up to the same amount at any point, no matter what height that I picked or no matter what velocity that I had um, chosen. So that's one way of thinking about conservation of, um, of energy is the total mechanical energy, kinetic plus potential, um, must be equal all the time.